of a good uh, tuna tuna melt and little little fish dinner, fish and chips. Well, look, look. If you open it up, it's a, it's educational. It's educational. A little anatomy lesson for you. Listen well, young man. Let's talk about enamel pins. One of my favorite things to collect, I love enamel pins. I love picking them up from different artists at different events. They're easy to make, they're easy to produce, they're super fun to design. Um, so let's talk about how to get that done, some of the manufacturers I use, and at the end of the video, I'll even show my collection. So first things first, you need to make the artwork to get the pin made. So you wanna keep in mind how the final product is gonna look. So you wanna do a little research, you wanna look at different designs, gain some inspiration, you know, don't copy anybody, but you know, keep in mind these things, right? If you're doing soft or hard enamel pins, which is kind of the standard format for most pins, obviously there's a ton of options out there and we'll show some on screen. We're gonna make our artwork, we're gonna keep in mind that enamel pins are made through a mold process. So you have to have these different grooves so that the enamel can sit within the thing. You can't just have like an open side without line work, right? But once you think you have a pretty good rough estimate of your artwork, um, you can definitely send that to any given number of manufacturers for a quote typically. But you know, essentially a mold's made and then enamel is poured, right? And then they kind of finish that off and kind of put on the backings and essentially you can make, you know, keychains and all sorts of stuff the same way, just without the backings and different hardware, right? So most pins are made through China for a various of reasons, such as counterfeit laws, chemical laws, and just the cost. Um, other than a few exceptions, almost no pins are made here in the US. The creation of enamel pins isn't great for the environment. Enamel takes, you know, some weird chemical processes that I don't understand that's just, you know, not the best for the environment or the planet. So definitely keep that in mind when you're considering this as a product. In fact, this planet. And the machinery that is needed to make enamel pins um, is very similar to coins, which is why you'll see um, laws that keep manufacturers from obtaining those machines. Thus why those manufacturers that do make enamel pins are mostly based in China or overseas. So definitely keep that in mind when you're thinking about a timeline. It can take anywhere from, you know, a few weeks to two, three months to make um, you know, your product, depending on how complicated the design is and the manufacturer. So because of this, the majority of companies you will see out there are what I would call a middleman. These are companies that will act on your behalf directly with the manufacturer. They are not the ones actually making your pin, but will make sure that your files are prepped properly and will typically be the ones that will quote you the price for your pins to be made and that you will pay through. They most all take a cut of the profits However, you might think that this would make your product cost more than it should. However, I found that most of these middleman companies are much better at negotiating prices with the manufacturer than we as individuals are. So oftentimes when I was comparing prices directly with manufacturers and even trying to negotiate with them, I still found that the middleman companies, at least the ones that I use, are very comparable. Because there is that built-in collector's market for pins, which a lot of other products don't have, you can move pins pretty quickly and pretty easily, I've found. Um, again, it depends on the shows you're going to and you know if the art's good and the design. If you're super particular, you're gonna wanna vectorize your files. However, with the companies I use, that's not necessarily um, needed. They vectorize them for me. Obviously, I have to trust that they're gonna vectorize that accurately. I hate using Illustrator, I hate vectorizing things. Obviously, if you wanted to do that yourself, it's gonna be a lot more accurate and a lot safer. A good way to see if your image is going to vectorize easily or well is to go into Illustrator and use the image trace option. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is pull in your artwork into Illustrator. This can be any file format. This is a JPEG. And once you do that, you can go up to Window, go down to Image Trace right here in the middle, and you're gonna get this window here. You're gonna to go to preset and you can pick any one of these to get started. I like to use the three colors. This is going to vectorize the image and simplify it all within that three color parameter. But because I want a four color pin design and then for this template, the metal is going to act as its own color also. So five colors in total. I'm gonna to go over to this slider over here that says color and then I'm gonna pull that to five colors and it's going to re-vectorize it based on those parameters from our original artwork. 
once you've done that and you're happy with it, you can select everything and see what its image traced and separated. You can even go to layer and see all those individual shapes. And then you can go over and select the exact shape that you'd like to examine. And that looks like a pretty good mold to me. I like how the line work came out, so I'm quite happy with that. And then if you're ready, you can either do any last minute adjustments or edits, and then you can um, export that as your vector file. And here you can see the original artwork, the vectorized file, and then the final product. Check this guy out. You seen this? Seen one of these? Shiny, right? So the manufacturer that I use currently for most of my designs is Galaxy Design Squad. I've had a really good experience with them. And one of the biggest benefits I think of them is how good their proofs are. If you're worried about how something might turn out in a certain metal or a certain color, or you're not good at picking Pantones, or you don't want to vectorize things, Galaxy Design Squad will do all those things for you. They'll transfer your colors into Pantones as close as possible. They'll vectorize it very accurately. And then they'll show you this really great proof of what they're gonna send to the manufacturer. So I sent out some artwork a few days ago to get some quotes done and they just came in. There's four designs in total and I wanna get 500 pins um, of all of them made. So 125 pieces each. So I get kind of a bulk discount because of that, as you can see down here but it's still, you know, just under $2,000, which is quite a bit. The average cost ends up being 360 per pin, which isn't too bad, but I wanna see what the breakdown per pin is as they vary drastically in size and kind of um, color variation and stuff like that. So we'll just scroll down, take a look. So the first one is by far the largest pin. It's two and a half inches. Two inches is kind of the max standard. So anything that goes over two inches ends up getting an extra mold fee because of the size. Um, and as you can see here, we did get quite a bit of an upcharge, $120. You know, the per unit cost is quite high to begin with already. So it ends up being $6.34 per pin. You know, it's going to really make me think about how much I'm going to have to charge for this pin and if I think people are really going to buy it. So at $6 a pin, really I should be charging $25 or $30, but realistically I don't think at that price it would move very fast. So I'm not sure. So I'll probably charge like $20 and even then $20 for a pin don't seem to move as well as like $15 or $12. So that's kind of the risk you play with getting larger pins made is the cost can like double and triple, especially if they're over that two inch mark. Two inches and under just seem to be the standard. You get much cheaper prices for that. So let's kind of break down what we're looking at other than that. So we've got the mold fee, we've got the per unit fee, we've got additional posts. So there's multiple posts on the back. The first seven colors are included with whatever design you get done in the quote but because this is an 11 color pin, um, there's an extra 10 cents per pin per color. So that's another 40 cents per pin just for the four extra colors, which costs another $50 adding to our $792.63 total for 125 pins. And then one of my favorite finishes for, you know, especially copper metal or rose gold as some people like to call it, is this matte finish. Um, it just makes everything kind of less shiny and feels a bit more elegant. Um, it is, you know, a bit extra, another 10 cents per pin, but I really like the final outcome. And as you can see, these proofs from Galaxy Design are very good. They're showing a really great representation of what the pin might look like when it's done and in my experience they have been very accurate other than you know the actual you know shiny effect that you know you're only going to catch in real life so we'll move on to the second design this one being quite a bit smaller it's an inch in 0.25 in total so you know you'll see that the price is you know two dollars 82 cents per unit and then plus all our little extra things that we added on ending up in $2.81 per pin. So that's a lot closer to the price range that you wanna be. Again, this pin is half the size, but it's you know definitely less than half the price. Actually, I think that's a pretty good price. So I'm quite happy with that there. If we move on to the next one down farther, 
So this one's an inch, a little over an inch, and it's actually a little bit more, I think because of the additional colors. Other than that, it's very comparable. Pretty happy with that price range. $3 for a one inch pin, um, or even a little bit bigger. You know, not too bad. I would say that's pretty standard. And then let's move on to our last design. So here's the final one. It is very tiny. It's just a little bit over half an inch. Um, you know, nothing really added on extra other than that matte finish again. Um, so $2.36, which is not that much cheaper than, you know, the last two, you know, much more complicated and bigger pins. So I would say $2.36 and 36 cents for half an inch pin is quite high, but because these two are, you know, I think on the lower end, and then of course we have this really expensive one, $3.60 overall is not bad, but once I start looking at these breakdowns, you know, you know, we're, we're gaining some money here, we're losing some money for what I would expect for pins this size, but overall it kind of averages out. And again, we're only getting 125, pieces for each design that's not too high so if i was you know double that quantity or whatever i probably would get a much better price break but for what we're getting i think that's okay i'll give it a try again i'll be interested to see how fast these larger pins move as i'm going to have to charge way more for them where you know i might be able to charge 10 12 dollars for these smaller ones that's pretty standard and then the small small guy i don't think people are going to spend very much on a pin that size but again it costs me almost the same amount as like one of these you know pins up here so that's going to be a tricky thing to price you know i'm going to try to probably sell these as a set but if people don't want the set um it might get a little tricky so you know that's the quote and breakdown of the prices i just received from galaxy design squad i'm going to go ahead and pay this invoice so the first pins i ever got manufactured was through alchemy merch they were formerly known as pin game strong but since then they've gone on to offering more products, general merch type things, apparel, lanyards, backpacks, all sorts of stuff. You can see it all on their website. They offer a ton of products, which could be a benefit on, you know, going through them through other things. You might be able to bundle stuff. I'm not really sure. I've only ever gotten enamel pins made through them, but the reason I've used them is because of the one-on-one -on -one experience I had with them when I was first starting out. When you send them your design and ask for a quote, they assign you a representative and the representative I got was extremely helpful. Um, they told me what was gonna work, what wasn't gonna work. You know, they explained me part of the process on how things are made. They gave me suggestions, all these things that I found that were invaluable to the pin making process. So for those reasons, I definitely recommend Alchemy Merch, especially to beginners. I think they're a great place to start making pins. One of the other benefits of them is that they tend to have a cheaper starting point for small batches of pins. I found that like, you know, if I'm just getting a hundred pins made, um, it's cheaper to go through them than it is some of the pin specialists. If I'm getting like a large order or like a group order done, you know, 500 or more, um, then not so much their price breaks aren't as good as some of the bigger pin places. My one issue that I ever had with them, so I've ordered the same design multiple times through them, and between the different batches, I will see inconsistencies. And it's not that the pin quality is bad or that there's defects, but sometimes like the metal might be thinner on one batch to the other, or you know the colors might be slightly off from one to the other. And like the individual batches are consistent, but the you know order one from you know order six months later might look considerably different. So, you know, if that's an issue for you or if you're looking for consistency, that's definitely something to keep in mind. You know, I've seen the metal finishes vary drastically between them. And again, it's always great quality. It's just they're not always the most consistent. So definitely something to keep in mind when considering them. But again, for beginners, I think they're a great option to consider. So let's talk about grading pins for a second. I know a lot of artists grade their pins. There is a huge collector's base in pins, like we've said before, and they can be pretty particular about defects. Enamel pins are very much a handmade process, so it can be quite difficult for manufacturers to have a 100% consistency rate, even with a single batch of pins. So definitely keep that in mind, and that's where the grading system kind of comes into play. So like the an A graded pin would be a pin that has no defects or as close to the intended artwork as possible, right? 
So a B graded pin would be something with very slight defects, maybe a small scratch or something like that. And then it goes down from there, C, D, unusable. However, not all artists use that. I actually use a pass fail system. So any pins that I think look great and are sellable, that's pass. Anything with a slight defect or more, um, that's in the fail category and I don't sell them. Oftentimes I'll donate them, give them away to friends, or if there's a lot of them, I'll send them back to the manufacturer and have them reuse them and destroy the old ones. That might not always be possible, so you wanna make sure that you're doing quality checks on your pins and being very vocal if there's issues with your manufacturer or your middleman, again, who take a lot of the risk. So don't be scared to be like, hey, you know, 30% of my pins have like the wrong color somewhere or like aren't filled all the way with enamel or kind of look funky or burnt or scratched. You know, these are definitely things to look for, especially with that big collector's market. And a lot of those collectors can be very particular about getting an A graded pin or a pin without defects or, you know, a quote unquote, give me a good one. You'll hear that a lot from customers who collect pins. So definitely keep this in mind when quality checking your pins.
Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If this video helped you out at all, please give the video a like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Um, and if you want to see any other videos related to art or marketing, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Take a look, Pikachu, a rainbow badge. Never forget, baby, what's inside. Look, a couple bones. That's what we all, you know, that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to be. But you flip it over, you can, you can put it to your, uh, put it to your vest. That's a, that's how they work. It's a how-to video. There you go. You just, look, I'll show you a little how-to video. You take this off, yeah. You just uh, you, you kind of put it right there. You make sure to put it right through your skin. Um, you know, pain is fashion, right? That's what it is. You put it in there, and there you go. There you're like a, you're a fish boy. You're a, you're a fish guy. You're fishing about.